So good afternoon. Let me just start first of all by saying that um, it was an enormous joy to watch this team play its way through the playoffs and especially to avenge the defeat two years ago against Minnesota Duluth. And the way they did it, I think, speaks in many ways to the character of this group of players and the coach who led them through the past three seasons. For those with short memories, and that's kind of the world we live in, this hockey team went to the Frozen Four and to the finals in 2019 and lost a very tough game to a very good team for Minnesota Duluth in the championship. And there was a lot of talk in the time about we'll get them next year. We learned a lot. It's been a great experience. And then for many of these kids, next year never happened because of COVID. So here we are two years later. Some of the kids are back. Some of them have moved on. But that sense about the missed opportunity of two years ago is still very much with them. And they play their way through the tournament in this part of the country and, and in a fitting act of UMass excellence, end up playing some team from Lowell to make their way to the Final Four. So I gotta tell you guys, how cool was that? So here they are, they're in the Frozen Four. It's two years later. 700 and something other days. And who they come up against? Minnesota Duluth. The big bad beast of the Midwest. Now honestly, how many people here stayed up and watched that whole game? That was a tough game. And I'll tell you something. By the time we were halfway through the third period, we're down one goal, the ice seems to be uphill on our end and downhill on theirs. I'm starting to think this isn't going to happen. Team's undermanned. It's missing several of its key players. Folks who came in behind him stepped up in a big way and kept them in the contest. Then there's a massive scramble in front of the net. UMass scores, and all of a sudden the ice goes from this to this. And for the rest of that third period and the entire overtime, UMass was skating downhill. Minnesota Duluth was skating uphill. And it was just a question of when that game was going to end. And it did on one of the most beautiful digs and passes this kid from Massachusetts has ever seen. On to the finals. Now, it's pretty clear that game was over before it began. And we're all sitting there, it's one nothing, thinking this is great. And it's two nothing, thinking this is even better. And then one of the prettiest shorthanded goals you're ever going to see in a hockey game makes it three nothing. And at that point in time, it's almost like it's too early to break out the champagne. But this is starting to feel very special. Four, five. And then the coach did something I've never seen somebody do before. He's ahead five nothing in a championship game, and he calls a timeout. And he gets all the kids around him on the bench and the kids on the ice. And he says, you're about to do something very special. And in the chaos and the, and the noise and the celebration at the end of this game, I don't want you to miss this opportunity right now to appreciate the significance of what you've accomplished. And it spoke in many respects to both 
the class and the character of the coach, but the relationship that he has with the kids that play on that team. And I couldn't be more proud of the way these folks made it almost all the way two years ago, had an opportunity to play again, taken away from them last year, and then dealt with all the, all the stuff the pandemic threw at them this year, and a really tough game in the semis against Minnesota Duluth to pull this off. They are a terrific hockey team. Chancellor would be first to tell you they're also great students. And they have made all of us here in Massachusetts so proud of their work, their performance, their excellence, and their determination. Congratulations to all of you. And I got a little citation for them, and the reason it's a citation instead of a proclamation, proclamations are so big, they end up in a drawer. I'm hoping a citation ends up in some place where people can see it. And with that, I'll turn it over to Lieutenant Governor. Thank, thank you, Governor. It's a great honor to be here today as we celebrate this incredible accomplishment and victory, becoming the NCAA National Championships of an historic achievement for UMass Amherst and for our Commonwealth. Uh, let me just say, how do you how do you get here? And I, I think I want to just take a, a quote from Coach Carvel. I saw it in one of your uh, news releases about those who laid the foundation. And while each individual uh, player is an, an exceptional uh, athlete, you have to think about all those who've come before them, players, coaches, administrations that supported this organization to be what it is today. And speaking uh, for a moment as a mother of two high school athletes, uh, I know how much goes into it as a family, as mothers and fathers uh, support uh, their son or daughter to have the opportunity uh, to get into a sport and to compete and what, what that can do for an individual and for their future. Uh, I have to make an assumption that these four players and the others who competed probably strapped on a pair of skates shortly after they figured out how to walk and that this sport was very much a part of their life, uh, pretty much their whole life, and that they worked hard individually to succeed, to excel in terms of their skills, and to be conditioned and fit to get out there and compete as a singular athlete. But the real magic to this accomplishment is, is not just the individual star that each one is, but the star power that comes with a group of individuals like these coming together, supporting each other, believing in each other, respecting one another, helping each other and lifting each other in the hardest of challenges and in the best of moments along this journey. And that's what separates this group of individuals from others that didn't get to achieve the final win. Uh, this is an incredible team. It's an incredible group of talented individuals who loved and supported each other all the way to the finish. And I'm just so psyched for them, uh, for their team. I would think about this in their lifetime of stories to tell. This will be pretty much one of the, the greatest stories for them to repeat over and over again. Uh, I'd also just like to acknowledge uh, uh, for them that it's a ton of hard work and focus and discipline to achieve this victory in normal times. And for them to have persevered through COVID protocols and quarantines and isolation and work through all of the mud involved with that and still come out on top is extraordinary. So for that, uh, joining others that sort of built up the, the whole foundation of support for you, I just want you to know uh, how proud we are as a Commonwealth uh, to support you and to, to have this victory be a part of our Commonwealth's history. I just want to thank the Chancellor, I want to thank the President, my colleagues in the legislature, 
Uh, this is a really proud moment for all of us, and I'm so glad we could take a moment to celebrate the accomplishment. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you. With that, I'd now like to turn it over to Speaker Mariano. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I am really thrilled to be here with the governor and the lieutenant governor and my colleagues uh, in government, along with the chancellor and the president of the university system. Um, I, too, watched that whole game in the semifinals. But, Governor, I shut the finals off about halfway through because I was positive they were going to win and they were going to carve out a little piece of history for Massachusetts. And I am extremely proud of the fact that they did it in the midst of a pandemic, going to school virtually, with all the hassles that come with that, yet we're here today celebrating their determination and their effort. And more importantly, as a former teacher and a coach in high school, I can't believe their GPA. Wow. I would have been happy with half of what they got as a team to get through college. But look at it's a testament to the fact that they are workers. You don't win the highest prize in the country without working for it. And, and these guys are a real true testament to the work ethic that this coach has instilled in you, the UMass program. As the governor said, second time in three years, we look forward. We're not to put, I'm not putting any pressure on you guys, but I don't know how many are coming back, but Coach, you better get on the recruiting uh, trail. Uh, we look forward to many, many, many more of these, and it truly is a great day for the Commonwealth. And my congratulations to the school, to the players, to the coaches. Congratulations all. Good afternoon. My name is Dan Carey. I'm the state representative for the second Hampshire district, which is four towns 100 miles away, just outside of Amherst. My friend Senator Comerford and Representative Dom are out in Western Mass right now, but I took the trip as I represent the town of Hadley, which is where most of the UMass athletic facilities are. So I not only want to congratulate the team, I want to thank you for bringing the trophy home to the second Hampshire state rep district. It really means a lot. The buzz around Western Mass, around Amherst, around Hadley about this team is extraordinary. I was maybe 10 or 12 years old when the UMass men's basketball team was making those big runs in the 90s. And it's the same kind of excitement now when you are talking to neighbors, constituents, out to get a coffee, everybody's saying, did you see the game last night? Did you see the goal? Everybody's talking about it. And in a time when we need to find bright moments wherever, whenever we can, this team was such a bright moment for all of us in Western Mass, across the state of Massachusetts, and for hockey fans across the country. So on behalf of the House and the Senate, I'd like to read a resolution now in honor of the championship team. Whereas the University of Massachusetts at, at Amherst men's ice hockey team won the 2021 National Collegiate Athletic Association Championship for the first time in the school's history. And whereas in the semifinal game, the University of Massachusetts at Amherst men's ice hockey team defeated the defending national NCAA champions, the University of Minnesota Duluth, by a score of 3-2 to two in an overtime thriller. And whereas on April 10th, 2021, UMass Amherst men's hockey team, led by team captain Jake Godet, coach Greg Carvel, defeated the St. Cloud State University men's ice hockey team by a score of five to zero in the NCAA championship final. And whereas the student athletes overcame adversity during a pandemic to not only win the 2021 national championship, but to do so with a team GPA of 3.7. And whereas under the leadership of UMass President Marty Meehan, Chancellor Subaswamy, AD Ryan Bamford, 
The UMass ice hockey team brought pride to the Commonwealth with their first national championship. Therefore, be it resolved that the Massachusetts General Court hereby congratulates the UMass Amherst men's ice hockey team on winning the 2021 national championship. Congratulations, team, and I'd like to introduce Chancellor Subhaswamy now. And although this is the size of a citation, it's a resolution, so I know it's not going to end up in a drawer somewhere, and the Chancellor's going to make sure of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative Kerry. And also thank you, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and uh, Mr. Speaker, for inviting us to the State House for this celebration. What a great day for the student athletes, our hockey program, our campus, and for the entire Commonwealth. It's never lost on me whenever I come to visit this building that it was an act of legislature in 1863 that established our university and that our partners in government have helped keep our mission alive for 158 years. It's never lost on me that in fact we are the moral grant institution of Massachusetts and our success, whether in the classroom or in the lab or on ice, belongs to the people of the Commonwealth. In fact, it is our mission to align the campus with the priorities of the Commonwealth. And we all know that proud Bay Staters have no greater priority than winning. Having spent my career in public research universities, I know how important collegiate athletics are, not just to the student athletes, but for the entire campus community and beyond. And in that precious moment, when the state's flagship university rises to the highest heights possible in athletics, it buoys the entire state. I've heard from many of you in the legislature and from the governor that you took as much pride as we did in, say, in seeing Massachusetts emblazoned across the front of our student athlete sweaters as they really pr provided a source of incredible pride for us. And it has really been such a pleasure to watch these young men lead this program from the bottom of Hockey East to the top of collegiate hockey. These student athletes represent everything that makes UMass great. Hard work, determination, and a strive for excellence. Our athletic director, Ryan Bamford, is with us today. Ryan has executed on his vision for an athletic program focused on the development of student athletes, academic excellence, and community service. And all the good decisions Ryan has made, of many good decisions he has made, none was better than hiring Greg Carvel. He is the best coach in collegiate hockey. He coaches character as hard as he coaches skill. And he brings a work ethic, a savviness, and an intellect that you would only expect from a UMass alum. An alum of another UMass campus who has been wearing a little more maroon than blue lately is one of our biggest supporters. Marty Meehan is a huge reason for the success of UMass Amherst, both in the classroom and in the athletic arena over the last six years. Please welcome President Meehan to the podium. Thank you very much, Swami. And uh, uh, just, I want to say I've been associated with the University of Massachusetts now for 13 or 14 years. And I can tell you the chance of Subha Swami, his commitment to excellence in hiring Ryan Banford and allowing Ryan to do his job, by any metric you'd measure a university, our flagship campus is in an upward trajectory. And that's in large part because of Swami's leadership. Swami, thank you for all that, uh, that you do. This great national championship is great for the Commonwealth. It shows the Commonwealth Public Research University's commitment to excellence. And it, it's a great win for Amherst and for the flagship, but the fact of the matter is, all of us at UMass, this is great for the brand. I look out and I see Mary Burns, who's probably our most pro-athletic uh, trustee that we have, a UMass Lowell alum and a UMass Lowell hockey supporter for years. No one has supported uh, UMass Amherst Hockey more than she is, has, Mary, and thank you for that. And as the speaker is a UMass Boston grad, and I know the pride that he feels uh, about this team, and I know that the governor uh, called uh, Coach Carvel when he was on the ice to congratulate him. So we have 500,000 alumni across our campuses that are thrilled with this. 75,000 students 
at the University of Massachusetts on all our campuses that take pride in this. We have 24,000 employees that are absolutely so proud of, of this team and the university's success because when Amherst does well, all the campuses do well. I've long believed that athletics is a front porch of any university. You need to show excellence in everything that you do, in your research, in your graduation rates, your retention rates. But athletics is important to demonstrate that you are committed to excellence, that you're in Hockey East because you want to win and you can compete for a national championship. And that's exactly what this team has done. And whether you're alumni from UMass Amherst and Dartmouth uh, who flew the International Space Station, we're proud of them. Uh, UMass Lowell researchers, researchers who are now contributing technology for exploring Mars. UMass Boston researchers who are leading the way right now on the impact of COVID-19 underrepresented communities or at the UMass Medical School, a scientist here winning the Nobel Prize. That's all great for this university on all of our campuses. And I want to say a word, the governor mentioned uh, character. This team has character. Four of its players couldn't go to the game against Minnesota Duluth because of COVID-19 procedures that, that had protocols that had to be followed. There's a kid named Mike Murray out at Amherst. He has won more hockey games at goal than a, any goaltender in UMass history. And somewhere along the line, he lost the number one goalie's position. He became the number two goalie. And the coach will tell you he worked as hard during that period of time, getting ready for the next game, as he did when he knew he was going to start the game. And when it came time for the Minnesota Duluth game, and I read his comments about his teammates, about what it meant to be part of a team, and he was going to go out and he was going to be ready because he made himself ready. That builds character. That's what UMass is all about, determination. And he performed wonderfully. And then the, new, the other goalie came back and did a great job in the final game, and no one was supporting him more than, uh, than Matt Murray was. These, these guys have a 3.7 QM, a 3.7 QM. 18 of them made the dean's list last semester. They volunteer in food pantries in Amherst. They go into classrooms and read to students. And with the pandemic, they've been doing the same things online. This is a team with character. And, and you can tell where it comes from. It comes from the athletic director, Brian Bamford, and the tremendous coach we have in Coach Carvel. So I'm very, very proud of this day. I'm proud of this team. But I'm also proud of the entire university and the way we have all embraced the success of UMass Amherst generally, but this team in particular. And it only makes for a bright future for the University of Massachusetts. It's my honor to introduce uh, Ryan Banford, the athletic director. And I can remember when I first met Ryan, I, I kind of, he came up to me and he was talking about, I understand you get involved in sports. I was a chancellor at Lowell at the time. And we kidded back and forth about the hockey program. The hockey, if you play in Hockey East, you want to make sure you can compete. And Ryan went out and got the best coach in the country, and I'm so proud of the job that they both have done. Please welcome the athletic director, Ryan Banford. Thank you, Thank you President Meehan. Uh, Governor Baker, Lieutenant Governor Polito, uh, Mr. Speaker, legislative leaders, thank you for having us. Uh, it is wonderful to bring the flagship to Boston. Uh, I will tell you, five years ago, when we recruited Coach Carvel to our campus, uh, we sat in my office, Greg and I did, and we talked about being excellent at this university, about representing the Commonwealth on a national stage, and even the idea of winning a national championship. And five years ago, when we announced Coach Carvel, we brought him to Boston, and we, it was our last time that we were here at the State House uh, together. We went into the chambers and met uh, some legislative leaders and went out on the veranda and took pictures. And I can honestly tell you that um, through the last five years, it is no surprise that we are standing here now winning, having won a national championship. Everything that Coach Carvel does, uh, it, it really, as a program, it starts here. It starts with the leadership that we have uh, at, uh, in this commonwealth, in this state. Um, and then it comes down to our president's office. 
the work that they do to support athletics, our chancellor, the best chancellor in the country, and a big reason for our success as a flagship institution. And so hiring Greg Carvel, <laughs> hiring Greg Carvel um, was really probably the easiest part because he took all of that, put it together, and built not only a championship caliber program, but you've heard the accolades. We talk about in our athletics department about being champions in the classroom, about being champions in competition, and about being champions in the community. And this group of young men, we only have four with us today. There are another 25 or so uh, that are, are finishing up their spring term and, and or have moved on to pro hockey. Um, but they do more community service than any team in our, in our department. They have the highest team GPA, and now they're national champs. Um, I'd like to introduce our head hockey coach to say a few words, and then, uh, and then we will present our leaders with uh, a few gifts from Amherst. Greg Carvel. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here. This is a great way to finish off a championship season. Uh, there's a saying, to the victors go the spoils. And we've had quite a few spoils since last Saturday night, but maybe the best one was the two-hour drive I had in today where every five miles I saw a sign that said UMass National Champs. It was awesome. I think I screamed out every time I saw it. Um, as a coach, I've learned a few things over many years, and one is the power of common purpose. And a few years ago, we decided as a program, as a hockey team, our common purpose was to be the gold standard in everything that we did. And I told the kids, we have high standards, we're going to reach for them, and we're going to achieve them, and we'll know that we we're the gold standard when other people start telling us about it. Not that we're going to tell them, they're going to tell us. And to listen to everyone today talk about our achievements in the classroom, in the community, and on the ice, substantiates and uh, we are the gold standard. And it's, it's the kids, it's the guys behind us on the steps that did all the work. Extremely proud of them. And, and somebody mentioned the story of three minutes left in the game, championship game. During a timeout, I called the kids in, and more than anything, I thanked them. I thanked them because they did all the work. I thanked them for all their sacrifices, for their commitment. And today is an, uh, just another opportunity where I get to thank this group of people who have supported me. Uh, I left my one alma mater to come to UMass, my other alma mater. And when I interviewed, I only interviewed with two people, Ryan Bamford and Chancellor Subaswamy. And that's all I needed. And after I met those two, even though UMass was in a tough place, that had been going through a rough stretch, I knew with the, those two leading the way, I was excited to do it. And uh, Ryan said there was no doubt we were going to win a national championship. I never, ever said that. And <laughs> we just wanted to build a program that we could be proud of. And I think it's really important for our system, the university system, but particularly Amherst, to have a championship program, big state school, has something that they can cheer loud about. And I'm just really proud that we're able to provide that. Thank you. wanted to present uh, first Governor Baker uh, with a hockey sweater from the Frozen Four. No, year 21, so Governor Baker, thank you for your support. Next, our Lieutenant Governor. We are so excited. Thank you so much. This is fabulous. So proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Here's some, a hat and we also have a hat. So proud of you. 
and, Mi and Mr. Speaker. Look at that. Questions? Anybody got any on topic stuff for these guys? All right then. I think um, I think yesterday went um, went quite well. It was what I would describe as um, just another day, except that at this point in time, everybody in Massachusetts who's 16 and up is eligible to get vaccinated. And, and as I've said many times, we have the capacity in Massachusetts at this point uh, to vaccinate far more people than uh, we have supply. And if uh, now that everybody's eligible, if, um, if there's some progress made on the federal level with respect to supply, we can very easily you know, vaccinate twice as many people as we're doing now and fit it pretty easily inside our existing uh, vaccination network. At this point, we have hundreds of sites around the Commonwealth. And, um, and I fully expect that over the course of the next uh, 20, 30 days, we will see a lot of traffic. Um, one of the things that's been clear to us for a while, but showed up recently in some of the research that have been done is that people in Massachusetts want to get vaccinated. Um, there's very little hesitancy here. And, uh, and I hope that translates into a full slot of appointments every day, every week, uh, for the next few weeks. Oh, we can we can do we can do two X um, easy on what we've currently got in the system. If, if we're currently doing somewhere between sixty and hundred thousand shots a day, depending upon the day, we could easily do twice that amount. It would be it's several million. I mean, it's a big community. It's at least a couple of million. Um, the hard part about answering that question is uh, I'm not sure how many folks would fall into um, would fall into the category of, of being just under the eligibility limits because the numbers get kind of big when you get into the younger ages. But um, but I think it's at least a couple of million people. But remember, you know, we have two million people vaccinated at this point and about half fully vaccinated. We have another million people who are half vaccinated. So every day, um, about half of the shots that are delivered in Massachusetts are second shots for people who've already had a first vaccination. So every single day that goes by, somewhere between 40 and 50,000 people are going from being first dosed to fully dosed. At the same time, another 40 and 50,000 people are getting their first dose. And so this, I mean, this thing is, is a little bit like a flywheel at this point. You're going to see, um, you're going to see several hundred thousand people fully dosed and first dosed every week going forward here. I've said for a while that I thought by sort of the middle of June, everybody who wants to be vaccinated will have an opportunity to be vaccinated. Well, there are some walk-ups available in a variety of places, but part of the reason we've been working on an appointment-based system is the issues around storage and prep 
um, and sort of salvaging supply that comes with using both Moderna and Pfizer. One of the things that made uh, J&J, uh, prior to the federal pause that got put in place, such an attractive product was it didn't have many of those issues around storage prep and supply management, which really does complicate walk-ups because you really want to know every day. I mean, once you, once you thaw that stuff, you got about six hours to put it to work. And that creates a, a dynamic where appointments really matter with respect to making sure we don't end up not using um, vaccines, which is obviously a, a big deal. Um, we'll see what the feds say about uh, about J&J at some point down the road here, but that's an easier vaccine um, to think about as a walk-up or, you know, homebound or, you know, senior center or community center with a one shot and you don't have any of those issues around uh, around storage and thaw and, and prep. We've been working with, uh, we've been talking to the feds, talking to the employer community, and talking to our colleagues. There's a couple of them left. Um, and talking to our colleagues in the legislature about, um, about possible ways to mitigate this. Um, I think everybody knows that, uh, given the amount of unemployment we had last year, uh, that it would be a challenge to come up with what I would describe as the perfect solution but we do have some ideas about how to mitigate some of the, the hit, especially on some of the folks, uh, small businesses who saw very big increases uh, in their rates, especially at a point in time when we all know small businesses paid a really heavy price all the way through COVID. I'd rather continue to talk to the legislature and to others about them, and, and we'll put them forth soon. One of the reasons we asked for, uh, we asked for the delay in, in making payments was so that we could process some of these ideas. So um, I think everybody in the country is uh, anxiously awaiting that decision, uh, and we are too. Um, we've had lots of conversations over the course of the past several days with our colleagues in local government about this. Uh, we continue to monitor a lot of the channels that we've historically monitored around this stuff. Massachusetts had one bad day. Uh, all the way through all the activity of last summer, you know, literally tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people peacefully demonstrated here in Massachusetts. Um, but we're obviously going to keep talking to our colleagues in local government, and if we, and if we need to do some things to, um, at their request to make sure that uh, everybody stays calm and peaceful, we'll do that. But I'm, um, I've been incredibly proud of the way this state has dealt with these issues. We're also one of the few states that actually passed a significant piece of reform legislation around accountability and transparency and did it on a bipartisan basis. I think the big question here is just going to be what, what's, you know, what are people looking for? And, um, and what we do will ultimately be a function of what we hear from our colleagues in local government. <laughs> um, I think the so when sports finally started again collegiate level professional level high school level recreational um, I know I speak for myself and the lieutenant governor when I say how much incoming we got um, in handwritten letters in emails in phone calls and voice messages from people who were so happy to have this little piece of sort of joy and um, distraction in some respects from COVID back in their lives. And, um, and, and I think this one in particular, particularly given the fact that this team was there two years ago and came this close to winning a title then and then couldn't participate last year because of the pandemic, um, I think for all of us and for UMass alums and for everybody who's part of the community, this is a hockey state. Let's not forget that. I mean, we take enormous pride in the fact that um, it's not that unusual for a college hockey team from Massachusetts 
sometimes more than one, to end up in the final four uh, in college hockey, men's and women's. Uh, let's remember that the Northeastern women's team made it all the way to the final four as well. Um, and I think we love the fact that this is sort of a hockey mad um, commonwealth. And, and for these folks to, to take this one all the way to the top of the pile and to do it um, in such, um, in such a, a, a determined and, and exciting way is, is a big lift, I think, for everybody. But I, I think generally the, the return of sports, period, has been a really good thing for people. Say again. Oh no, I love. I'm very. This one, I'm. I don't quite. I don't quite know when I'll be allowed to wear this. <laughs> Whenever I will be, I will wear it proudly. Yeah, I mean, we're always looking at this stuff and um, and tend to make comments on it um, and, and offer uh, thoughts on guidance and advisories, you know, once or twice a month. That's typically been the rhythm we've been working on. And, uh, and this is obviously something that we're not just talking to local folks about. We've also been talking to the feds about it as well. I'd rather just work through the conversations with folks and, and stay on kind of that every two week or so time frame. Well, the hard part about answering that question, Steve, is I don't know how many people signed up, um, signed up yesterday and what that would have meant. The other thing you should remember here is one of the things we've discovered about the pre-registration site is it's a little bit like a, um, it's like a safety valve for a lot of people. Um, almost a third of the people who signed up um, unsigned up at some point because they got an appointment somewhere else. And I think that's going to continue to be the way this works. You know, a number of the folks, I think everybody who wants to get vaccinated will probably get on the site. And, and then they will work either their provider or one of the retail pharmacy sites or a community health center or a regional collaborative or one of the many other sites that are available. And if they pick up an appointment there, they'll go back on the site um, and sort of do the equivalent of unsubscribe. So I think, the, I think the site generally has had pretty consistently about a million and a half people on it, but a lot of the million and a half people on it are also uh, coming off it because they're getting vaccinated uh, at a different location. I mean, the... the the answer to that is, I think Mary Lou Sutter's talked about this last week, is we just, we pivoted it. I mean, it, we had a bunch of stuff, thousands of doses that were dedicated to um, a lot of that outreach work, and we pivoted it to use, um, to use Pfizer and Moderna. Now, the downside to that, um, and it's a, it's a modest downside. The downside is we got to figure out a way to get back to those folks um, in three weeks and make sure that we give them the second dose. And there are a few complications associated with, there are only certain kinds of people who have the, the storage gear and some of the other elements that are necessary to deal with the, uh, with the deep freeze requirements on that. Um, but we, you know, we basically pivoted the thing and we're still doing those services. Um, but instead of being able to one and done this for a lot of people for whom one and done would be very convenient, um, we're now gonna be doing two on a scheduled basis and coming back and making sure we do the, the second shot in the right time period. Thanks, everybody. Say again. We have not seen um, much change in uh, the level of interest in getting vaccinated um, here in Massachusetts. As I said, there was plenty of traffic on the pre-registration site. The pharmacies have pretty, plenty of traffic. Um, the community health centers do. Um, I think we're a way away from getting to the point where we're going to start having what I would describe as just openings. Um, generally speaking, people in Massachusetts are still pretty anxious to get vaccinated, and we think that's a really good thing. And congratulations again to this wonderful group of kids and the folks uh, who lead them.